distinguished secretary generals, director general and managing director, esteemed participants. At the outset of my speech, I want to extend my appreciation and congratulations to International Trade Center and to Ms. Patricia Francis, Executive Director of ITC, for organizing this forum today in Istanbul. I hope you enjoy your stay here in this uh, magnificent city. And please don't spend your time just in closed doors, but enjoy the nice weather and the good sightseeing offers uh, that Istanbul has. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, World Export Development Forum, without doubt, provides a useful platform to us for exploring new ways of helping these developed countries in their path to sustainable development and poverty reduction, with particular focus on the role and importance of tourism. Also, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this uh, significant event. Allow me by starting uh, with a few words on the crucial role of ITC, sponsor of today's meeting. ITC is a unique and leading trade-related technical assistance agency in the sense that it approaches to trade policy with a bottom-up perspective. That is to say, its policies and activities are shaped by a well reflection of the concerns and expectations of people living in least developed countries. From ITC's perspective, the LDC's trade does not represent a category in the global economics, but flesh and blood players striving to trade their way out of poverty, namely small and medium-sized enterprises, poor communities, women entrepreneurs, and policy makers. Let me get this out of the way. Dear guests, the least developed countries, LDCs, represent the most vulnerable segment of humanity. And this group consists of countries that suffer most from profound structural impediments to growth and prevalence of severe poverty. Currently, 48 LDCs comprise more than 800 million people, but accounts for less than 2% of global GDP and about 1% of global trade in goods. In this respect, today's meeting is very timely and welcome since ITC is proposing some concrete outcomes for the fourth conference on LDCs. These outcomes include how to build bankable projects around poor people's traditional assets and know-how by better integrating them in the value chain of the world first service industry, which is tourism. The world economy has suffered from several crises in the recent years, namely the financial crisis, followed by economic crisis, food crisis, energy prices, and we are gradually emerging from the crisis period. The challenges of food and energy crisis have not been totally averted. All countries, but mostly LDCs, still suffer from the adverse effect of these crises. This fact urges us to take prompt and more determined action towards the LDCs for inclusive growth, sustainable development, and integration into the multilateral trading system. Poverty reduction eliminating of hunger, job creation, employment, mobilization of domestic resources, and building productive capacities are not the goals of only LDCs, but they are the ultimate goals of the international community as LDCs partners as well. From this point of view, services sector plays an increasingly important role in achieving inclusive growth, sustainable development, and poverty reduction in these developed countries. What is more, services sector contributes more to GDP growth, job creation, and poverty reduction than industry 
in many developing countries. Let me give some few figures. Service sector now accounts for more than 75% of the global economy, and it is 45% of the developing economies. The share of developing countries in world services exports increased from 14% in 1990 to 21% in year 2008. The average growth of services exports of poor countries has exceeded that of rich countries during the last two decades. Their services exports are growing faster than goods exports. In brief, the globalization of services has enabled developing countries and also LDCs to utilize a new dynamic source of growth. Among the services sector, tourism has been identified as a major potential driver of growth in 30 out of 48 least developed countries. Among these, 23 of them, tourism is among the top three foreign exchange earners. And for seven of them, it is their single largest revenue earner. Tourism is an important area in services sector for LDCs, not only in terms of poverty reduction, but also with great regard to job creation. The linkage created with the local goods and services suppliers is a major element of job creation. Tourism-led growth strategy is a means of improving local economies, improving the standards of local communities and livelihoods. In this sense, tourism emerges as a key sector with high multiplier effect, not only in service sector in particular, but in national economy in general as well. Leading to improvement of human capital, development in physical infrastructure, and in broader sense, giving rise to structural transformation, tourism works like a catalyst in the economy. It is the engine in the socio-economy and the value chain in these countries. Today, our discussion gains further significance because while many developing or developed countries, tourism is considered as a marginal part of national economy, it is the first or the second most important source of export revenue for 20 least developed countries. Furthermore, tourism sector shows a notable rise in 10 other least developed countries. It would be insufficient to address tourism as a term as such. The term we prefer should rather be sustainable tourism because mentioning the important role of the sector, we need to emphasize preservation of cultural heritage and environmental prosperity as an indispensable and integral part of sustainability. In order to enhance the development of tourism, in a less developed country, government and private sector both have important functions. Governments should recognize that tourism is a core service sector which should always be considered when looking at policies to expand trade, increase employment, modernize infrastructure, and encourage investments at both domestic and international level. One of the principal roles of governments is to set policy and legislative frameworks for tourism so that favorable conditions emerge for the development of the sector. By supporting tourism and allowing it to compete in open and fair markets, tourism's benefits can more easily be secured. Offering appropriate investment incentives for the sector is usually needed in most LDCs. Private sector and public-private sector partnership can also contribute to the development of tourism sector in these developed countries. According to World Tourism Organization, tourism accounts up to 10% of the global GDP, making it the world's biggest industry. Yet LDCs are still minor players in the world tourism. LDCs participation in services development and trade is constrained by weak and underdeveloped supply capacities compounded by regulatory and institutional weaknesses and market access constraints. In 2009, 
The LDCs represent 3% of the total travel exports from developed, developing countries and 1% of the world total. But they are growing faster than other countries and hence increasing their market share rapidly. Between 2000 and 2009, tourism receipts in LDCs expanded by 14% annually, higher than the growth rate of the overall economy. With the right partnership and a favorable business environment, tourism-led growth can and should be enhanced for many least developed countries. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I would like to talk a little bit also about the tourism sector in Turkey and what we have done. We have always approached the sector as a very important sector for foreign currency inflows to the country and also a key sector for job creation. In 1980s, we have provided a good set of incentives for tourism investments. What we have done mainly was to give land suitable for tourism activities to private sector companies almost for free for 49 years so that they can build and operate tourism facilities on this land. And there was a fast stream of uh, investments uh, in the coastline of Turkey or here in uh, Istanbul and the very first real good tourism facilities started to be developed during those years. And uh, in 1980, the share of agriculture and industry in our economy was almost 25% and 25%. And services sector share was slightly below 50%. And now the percentage of services in our economy increased to 55% of our GDP. And now agriculture is only 9.4% of our GDP. When we look at the employment figures, 